Hi, my name is Javon Hagen, new to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and you're listening to the Tom Scoop Podcast. What is going on, everyone? It's your boy Q. We got another fantastic interview for you guys today. Today, we are talking to one of the newest Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Javon Hagen, signed after the draft. An incredible athlete. Super excited to talk to him today and have him on the show and just, you know, talk about this experience this weekend and everything about football. Super excited. Let's first, let's bring in Anthony. Anthony, how are we doing, man? I'm great. And the draft was great. This weekend was great. And now all these guys like Javon get a case to make their name. And, you know, it's so awesome to see Javon get signed. And I can't wait to see what he brings to the Buccaneers. Yeah, for sure, man. Javon is safety, newly signed to the Buccaneers. Some accomplishments about him. Excuse me. He amassed 102 tackles last season as a member of the Ohio Bobcats, totaled an impressive 318 total tackles along with nine forced fumbles and six interceptions, signed with the Buccaneers as an undrafted free agent on the 25th of April, tweeted hashtag Super Bowl vibes shortly after signing with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. My guy, how are we doing today? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing fantastic. I woke up, uh, woke up pumped, man. Happy to be a buck for sure. Yeah, I mean, I bet. I mean, just also, you know, with everything that's been going on with Tampa Bay lately, you know, they get Tom Brady, they get Gronk, you know, you're playing on an incredible team, incredible coaching staff. I bet you're just through the moon right now. I know I would be. Uh, where can people follow you at on Twitter and Instagram? On Twitter, you can follow me at Von, V-O-N underscore Legacy. And on Instagram, you can also follow me at Von Legacy without the underscore. First and foremost, welcome to Tampa Bay. And what are you looking forward to most to make in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers roster? What excites you about coming to Tampa? Um, just the the mentality, man. That, that's first and foremost. You know, like you said, we have um we have Tom coming, we have Gronk, we have a lot of special guys. We have um Anton Winfield, you know, who they picked up as well. So we have a lot of a lot of great talent this year. I feel we're definitely the most hyped up team going into the next season. Um, hopefully we have an opportunity to complete the season, you know, going through the whole pandemic thing and all that. So as, as of right now, we're not sure when things are going to um, start up as far as reporting, but uh, I'm just excited, man. One of my, one of my closest friends is a, is a diehard Buccaneer fan. He, he almost broke his phone. He was going so crazy yesterday and uh, I actually have a childhood picture of me in a Tampa Bay Buccaneers jersey when I was around like uh, six or seven years old. So it's kind of deja vu right now for me. Yeah, that's great to see things come full circle in life like that. That's a great story. And I was very happy to see that the Buccaneers did come to terms with you. As Q said, you had a tremendous four years at Ohio. And who was the first member from the Buccaneers organization that reached out to you and how excited were you? Oh, to be honest, I my phone is – my phone is like it was almost crashing yesterday because I had so many notifications. So I haven't really had a chance to um, check all of my messages yet, man. As a matter of fact, as soon as I get off of here, I have to check my messages and um, and uh, get back with everyone. But the the love from the Tampa Bay fans, first and foremost, I was actually able to see that on Twitter. Um, a lot of edited pictures. You know, I have a guy making another animation uh, type of edit for me. And just the love, man. You can tell that the love is there. I had so many people um, inboxing me saying congratulations and things like that. So I can definitely say that the um, the fan support is definitely there. You know, besides the uh, the outcome of last year's season, you can tell that the, the atmosphere in Tampa is still there no matter what they're going to support the organization. So that's something I'm looking forward to being around. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So how hard was it to prepare for this year's NFL draft with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, it was very difficult, you know, being uh, being from a, a small school, you want to you want to prove yourself, you know, and um, throughout my career at Ohio University, I, ha- I feel I had a, a very um, successful career. But it just goes to show that uh, coming from a small school, you know, coming from the MAC, you have to you have to go beyond. You know, you have to go beyond your limit. You have to 
you have to prove prove yourself still. You know, I was a four four time All Mac selection, and um, as you can see, I still ended up getting drafted. So it just goes to show you how difficult it is to actually enter the league and uh, make a name for yourself. So I'm um, going through everything. Uh, I left Ohio on Friday, the Friday before um, the weekend, heading into the 17th because my pro day was on the 17th, Tuesday, March 17th. And uh, it was actually canceled that Friday. So uh, I was trying to figure out ways to overcome it, you know, just figuring out ways to be versatile, you know, because uh, life will throw you a lot of challenges. So you just have to figure out how to overcome them and think quick on your feet. So uh, I was able to record a few videos from a few workouts. I actually planned on doing the mock pro day, but uh, seeing seeing a lot of guys making their, their, their virtual mock pro days and, uh, a lot of, a lot of num, a lot of low numbers in a lot of categories. So, it was a fear of um, not putting realistic numbers up. So that was kind of out of the picture, and um, I just kept working out. You know, kept kept eating right, and just kept making sure that I was prepared for whatever happened. But I was just treating every day like uh, they told me it was ready to go for pro days, just so I could be prepared. But uh, like you said, this pandemic has definitely, definitely changed a lot of things for a lot of organizations and a lot of people, especially with jobs and such. So uh, we just have to figure out how to overcome it. And I feel it'll be over soon. But uh, as far as the process of getting over it, it was extremely difficult for sure. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. So it says on the Bobcats website, you you partly chose to go there for their atmosphere. What excited you most about moving from Ohio to the Bay Area? Um, to be honest, just uh, adjusting, you know, I, I, I do a great job adjusting and I like adjusting to new things. Uh, throughout my years at Ohio, they teach us to adjust, you know, being in the sports management program, which is a uh, highly ranked. So a lot of things that we've done just teaches us to be comfortable in every setting that we're in. So I'm looking forward to just adjusting and uh, seeing what it has to offer. Yeah, so what was your favorite memory uh, playing at Ohio? Definitely winning Mac freshman of the year. Um, I was in class, and I honestly didn't even know about the award. But um, I felt my phone vibrating. I was actually in an econ, um, economics class, and my phone started buzzing. But, of course, I was trying to pay attention to the lecture. But then it started buzzing again and again, and it kept buzzing. So I'm like, I had to check in and make sure nothing was wrong. And then when I actually looked at it and seen that they had a picture of me uh, winning back freshman of the year, and I was also, I want to say, the only defensive player to win back freshman of the year from Ohio when I was looking at it. So um, it just shocked me because I had to register the year before, which is something that I wasn't used to. But like I said, man, adjusting is, is, is my thing. That's my, that's my, uh, that's my feel, you know, I like adjusting to things. So it just felt good to, um, finally get out of my, uh, comfort zone, you know? And, uh, like I said, once I seen it and I seen the notifications and stuff like that, I was just thinking like, this is a surreal moment and everything that I'm dreaming of is finally coming true, but it's a lot of work to do, but it just felt great to feel accomplished, you know, after taking that one year off. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, I can only imagine what that feeling must have must have been like in class. So we had former Southeastern Louisiana quarterback Donovan Isom on our show who made his first career start against you and your Bobcats in 2018. Did you get a chance to, you know, meet Donovan? And if you did, do you have any takeaways from that game? He mentioned you guys as, quote, elite competition, end quote. Um, I'm not familiar with uh, actually getting to know him, but I would like to, you know, sit down and get to know him and I, I honestly love watching football and talking football so even if it's a, a point in time where we can sit down and watch some film or something then I'll be that'll be that mean a lot to me especially the game that we played so yeah and you have a lot of film at Ohio you had a whopping 102 tackles compiled in 13 games last season as Q said that is a ton of tackles average around eight a game how are you so good at wrapping up and finishing your plays a lot of guys nowadays in the NFL uh, have problems with arm tackling lazy tackling but you not so much a guy comes your way they're going to the ground what makes you that difference maker um keen to hit for sure uh, throughout my career like you said it'll be a lot of um 
lot of opportunities where I can bring a good guy down, but uh, it will be something as far as like my angle in, you know, tackling is, is very difficult when it comes to certain angles. So you have to take the um, right angles and our coach, Coach Burrow and Coach Collins, well, before Coach Burrow left us and Coach Collins, they just taught us the um, eye to hip. We'll do certain drills to where if we're in a certain position, whether we're in a good position or a bad position, they'll put us in the um, best position to make a play. And then we'll just carry that on to the game, you know, because the, they say uh, practice how you play. So it'll just be the little fundamental things in practice that we work on. So when it comes time to actually play, it could be natural to us, you know. So if you watch the film and you see certain tackles that I make, some are extremely difficult, but it comes down to the work that we put in uh, Monday through Friday to prepare us for Saturday. So uh, like you say, it, depend on, uh, it also depends on the – the opponent as well, whether he's a big back or a, a bulky back or a fast and shifty back. So it depends on if you want to tackle him high or you can tackle him low. Well, your film shows that it pays off as you've helped Ohio turn around and become quite the program that they are as they've competed in four straight bowl games, 2016 Dollar General Bowl, 2017 Bahamas Bowl, 2018 Frisco Bowl, 2019 Famous Idaho Potato Bowl. And you guys won those last three that I mentioned. How was it playing in those big time games and how has it helped you prepare for the NFL? Oh, it felt great, man. It felt, it felt great being able to compete with another um, program besides a, a Mac opponent and being able to see certain schemes and certain offenses that, that prepares you, you know, for the future. So when it comes to playing um, another team from the conference or such or a certain type of scheme or a certain type of player, you'll be prepared, you know, because, uh, for example, we went from playing San Diego State in the Frisco Bowl in 2018 to playing the Nevada in 2019 and those their, their playing styles were a bit similar so it helps you it helps you prepare for things that's coming up and uh like i said it was a great experience man it's also like i said before adjusting to the circumstances that you're placed in you know we played in alabama one year and then we played in uh in uh, texas another year and then we went to the west coast and played in idaho the other year so uh, it feels great to be able to adjust not only to our opponent, but to the atmosphere where we're playing out as well. Yeah, and traveling like that really does help you prepare for the NFL as well. I feel like traveling all around and those big-time atmospheres, those big-time stadiums get you that big-time game feel. Have you had any word from Coach Arians or any coaches on the staff of when the first meetings or the first off-season programs might begin? Oh, we're, we're, we're thinking about um... – they said they're thinking about seeing what's the procedure for next week. Um, the this coach reached out to me yesterday and was very thrilled to have me and was looking forward to it. He actually asked me uh, how did I feel or how did I uh, end up in Ohio from Jacksonville, Florida. And I basically gave him the insight on the things that drew me close to the program and made me want to commit, you know, not only football, but the academic side as well as far as the sports management program being so hot. And that's uh, what I ended up getting my degree in sports management. So uh, I fell in love with the um, the football side. I fell in love with the academic side. And I just fell in love with the atmosphere as well, the way that everyone just made made everything feel so genuine. And then when I actually got to the program, it wasn't like it was a, um, a total 360 and everything was different again or, or it was something that blindsided me. It was everything stayed really consistent. I, I can say the only thing that wasn't really – um, expected was, of course, red shirt. But besides that, um, everything else was pretty much the same from my official visit, and that's what I loved about it. What do you look forward to most in the off-season programs with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I know times are a little weird right now. You can't get in the building like usual, but virtual, that's a great thing with technology. At least you guys still could keep in touch, communicate. What's one thing that you look forward to most in doing so? I'm looking forward to just getting to know the, the type of people that I'm – be around, you know, because it's great to know that and uh, building building relationships, you know, and just being focused. At the end of the day, we're focused on one goal, you know, and of course that's getting to the Super Bowl. And like I said, we have I feel we have the the keys to make that happen. So I'm looking forward to getting everything um, organized and ready to go. And I'm ready to learn for sure. I'm a great learner, and I'm ready to just learn, man, because in football is always something that you can get better at. So I'm ready to just start learning once we get in these meetings and uh, starting to get dive into the playbook and understand the schemes and what we're going to be running.
Yeah, that's awesome, man. So what what were your plans for draft weekend and when, I guess, kind of slash how did you find out you were going to be a Buccaneer? So my plans this weekend uh, was just to relax at home with my family. Uh, my girlfriend's here. She flew in from um, Ohio as well because she attends to school as well. She's from Dayton. So she flew here with me to be with me around this weekend. And uh, my mom's here, stepdad's here. So we didn't really plan uh, a big party or anything like that. We just wanted to relax and stay calm during this time because we knew this draft would be tricky due to the, um, the fact that everything was canceled so early because of this pandemic. So uh, my plans was to just, you know, relax at home, um, eat a great meal. My mom made prepared uh, salmon, lobster, and mashed potatoes. This is a great meal. It was a pretty heavy meal. So uh, I sat there and looked at the TV for about a good – about six or seven hours from 12 to seven, I was glued to the TV. So uh, once the uh, rounds were going on and on, to be honest, around like after the round five, I want to say that's when I wanted to, um, that's that's when I was basically uh, preferring. I was I was really, like at this point, I would rather go and draft it just due to the fact that uh, the, the financial situation, you know, when, once you're stuck in that contract, it's, it's kind of hard to, um, boost it you know you can't really boost it like you want to but the, the the pros of going undrafted is uh you're not really under no no thing where it's I mean we can't really give you any more money you know so uh, because I have a lot of friends in the league who went undrafted so they really taught me the procedures of how that goes and uh at the round seven Tampa um they promised my agent they said you know if we're not going to be able to draft them um, we're going to come immediately for them after the draft. And that's what they did. They came immediately for me. They kept their word. Um, they didn't sign another safety in the uh, free agency process. So uh, that was that was pretty good to me. And uh, I was actually um, thrilled about that, just the fact that they kept their word. So uh, that's what made me feel even happier about being a Buccaneer because, I mean, some guys, they, they say they're only going to sign so many people and then – you look up and they sign about four or five people in your position, you know, but Tampa Bay didn't do that. They kept the word and uh, that already showed me what type of people that I'm dealing with. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. You all, you, I love it when teams actually keep their word about things. So that's, that's really good to hear. Um, so obviously, you know, you and probably your agent were the first folk to know that you were going to be a Buccaneer. Who was the next person you told that you were going to be a Buccaneer? Uh, I called my mom in the room and I uh, told her, I told her, you know, Tampa Bay offered immediately, and they're they're thrilled, they're pumped up, and they're they're they're, they're, they're hoping to land me. And we just talked about it, and uh, we were smiling, we were happy that you know my dream was finally about to come true. And then uh, my agent reached out to um reached out to them, and basically I told him, uh, well, he told me the offers they offer some they they offer something good which I loved, and uh, I told him, you know, make me a buck at this point. You know, I I, I love the way they kept their word. They're offering some good things to me. Um, Tampa's a nice place. It's only two, two, two and a half hours away from my stay because we're in Jacksonville, so I believe it's about two and a half hours from here, so it's not too, away, too far away from home, so I can take care of my mom, my stepdad here, and my family here in Jacksonville. So I was like, man – Tampa is the is the right place for me, and um, that's when, like I said, I text my agent to him. I want to be a buck, and the rest is history. It's great that you're in your backyard. You're very close to home. And what are you looking forward to most as an NFL player? Is it playing for Coach Arians? Is it playing at Raymond James Stadium? Is it the travel schedule? Is it the big lights? What, what excites you the most? Oh, what excites me the most is uh, actually playing in the stadium, you know. Like you just said, uh, I actually went to – I used to go to um, the USF games before the stadium was built, and they used to have to play in the Tampa Stadium because uh, one of my coach's son used to play long snapper there. So we would actually go there quite a few times, and it's crazy that I'll actually be in that same stadium playing, you know, and not only just playing, but playing in the – this is the top league in America for football, you know, and it's – it's a lot of people who, who really don't even get this opportunity. So I just have to soak it in. And uh, I'm looking forward to 
actually being able to live out my dream and hopefully I can bring Tampa in the right position they need to be in and be an asset to the team and, you know, uh, help out as much as I can. I know you mentioned Antoine Winfield. He's one of about five, including yourself, six Buccaneers safeties on the roster. That is the perfect number. You guys will all be carried. You guys will be either on the practice squad, game day roster, whatever it is. What other safeties on the team are you looking forward to working with most besides Antoine Winfield? Um, I like Mike Edwards as well. You know, I've been st- I've been following him since uh, he left college. He's a pretty great player. Um, one of my friends from Cincinnati knows him very well. And uh, I believe he's from that area, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, yeah, he's a pretty great player. Um, I like his mentality. I like the way he uh, like the way he play. I watched some film on him. So uh, I'm looking forward to playing with him too as well. So have you been assigned or do you get to choose your own jersey number yet? Um, as far as jersey number, I'm not really sure yet. I'm not really sure how that, how that works. I can, uh, I can ask about that. If you get your choice, what number would you take? Uh, I have to look at the roster and see what numbers is open <laughs> because uh, I don't want to have to go through the whole thing that God went and Brady went through. So I have to see which numbers is available because that was funny. That was actually a bit funny. But the, the, those see. defensive backs have been changing like crazy too. Jordan Whitehead changes number. Carlton Davis changes number. So you're going to definitely want to make sure that, you know, all the numbers are settled in, and uh, I'm sure you'll get your number you want. You can't be number seven anymore, but you will get a good number. And uh, what, what's one thing you're going to tell the Buccaneer fan base that you would like them to know about yourself? Um, I'm, a, I'm a hungry athlete, you know. I'm, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty for information. I'm thirsty to strive for success. And uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers definitely got the dogs, and I always play with a chip on my shoulder. And whatever happens – we have to um, – we're never satisfied. We're never satisfied. So uh, they definitely got a dog, and I can't wait to work there. Yeah, so we've seen many, many undrafted free agents be successful at the next level, just to name a few, you know, Kurt Warner, Tony Jefferson, Josh Wells, Wes Welker, Tony Romo. We've recently seen the guys of, like, Philip Lindsay, Austin Eckler, guys like that who have been really successful in the NFL at being an undrafted free agent. So – the list continues to go on and on. What excites you the most about your opportunity to become historic like some of these guys we mentioned? Uh, just the ability to overcome the odds, you know. Um, going on draft, it can, it, can be, it can be heartbreaking to some and it can, it can depress some, but it actually excited me, you know, because I need things like this just so I wouldn't settle, you know, so I won't be comfortable. So um, going on draft, I told, like I said, to coach yesterday I said uh going undrafted <clears throat> made me smile a bit just to know that God is putting me in difficult situations so I can't settle you know and I can't be relaxed and I, I always got to know that um no matter what I have to keep running at this point I feel like um as an undrafted rookie I'm the I'm the gazelle you know I'm getting chased by a line so the, the the plan and the goal is to never get caught that's that's an awesome way to think about it, man. You know, there are some guys who, you know, they don't get drafted and they throw a fit and they just they're they're done after that. And then there's other guys who so far it seems like you're one of those guys who decide, you know what, I'm gonna put my head down, I'm gonna go to work and I'm gonna make the best of this that I possibly can and I am gonna become great. And I, I absolutely love that attitude, man, and I applaud you for that attitude. So tell us one thing that you would tell other undrafted free agents that are still waiting to receive a call. Um, don't don't give up, man, you know. Just keep praying, you know, keep praying. You know, I'm a heavy believer in Jesus Christ, so uh, I, I pray to get drafted. And I say, you know, God, if if I don't get drafted, I know it's for a reason, but um, I know for a fact that you will place me in the situation that I want to be in, and my prayer was answered. You know, it's not the, it's not the end of the road, man. I seen a guy get drafted yesterday who played um in the XFL, you know, yep. played in the XFL. Yeah, for the Panthers, the yeah. Yeah, one of safety. So it just goes to show, like, man, if you have a guy that um, that's not in the NFL and they're literally going to another league, don't know what to expect, don't know how many fans will be there, um, it's something new, and they're putting their bodies on the line every single day just to get back into the NFL or to into the NFL. If you have guys that can do that, then uh, sitting around and waiting on a phone call, 
shouldn't really be too much. You know, you're not putting your body at risk like others are. So at the end of the day, it's some people out there who um who have it worse. You know, it's some people who careers been cut short due to injuries. Who could have been in the NFL? Um, it's just some guys that's not probably in the same opportunity as you. So you just have to be grateful and be be ready for the opportunity when it's present. And if it isn't present, then everything happens for a reason. So. I think you brought up something fascinating, an XFL, getting, an XFL player getting selected by the Panthers. I know Q and myself, we love the XFL. We would have loved to see it succeed and be that true feeder league that it could be to the NFL where guys who play in the XFL get drafted or go on and sign in the NFL. But besides the fact that playing at Raymond James Stadium, besides the fact that great seafood opportunities at Charlie's Steakhouse in Tampa, besides the beautiful weather, um, monthly, daily, yearly. What's the most exciting feeling of playing with Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, Mike Evans, Levante David, Vita Vea? I mean, man, these guys are polarizing figures in the National Football League. It's just exciting to know that um, I grew up watching these guys play, and now I'm actually about to be in the same uh, same locker room with these guys, you know, and playing in the same stadium with these guys. That's that's what's most that's like. That's exciting, you know. That's exciting because Tom Brady is one of the – he's one of the best. You know, we all know that. He's a, he's the GOAT for sure. So, it's just crazy knowing that um, I finally get that opportunity to play a side of him, you know, growing up and watching him play as a kid to actually being his teammate. So, I'm looking forward to that. And I feel he's going to do the right amount of things to make sure that the organization is moving in the right direction. So, um, it's exciting to know that uh, – the people that you look up to can be your teammates one day. And we are a big-time fantasy podcast, and the Buccaneers have the places and peace to be a good fantasy defense. You could help them be a good fantasy defense. What excites you most about people drafting the Buccaneers defense and knowing you can make a difference? Hey, I got a forced fumble. Hey, I got an interception. That's cool that you could generate fans through fantasy football. For sure, man. Yeah, yeah. fantasy football is a big thing. You know, it's – I try to get into it more and more. It's a bit confusing to me, so I got to sit down and actually understand. I need to have someone uh, explain it to me. Hopefully, you guys can explain it to me. Because, yeah, you know, man. Hey, just, just tap into the podcast, man, and, and I guarantee <laughs> I will make you uh, a very good fantasy player for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because, man, I'll be, I'll be here. I mean, it'd be people hosting fantasy parties. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I don't know what is going on, though. I mean, it was just one – this one guy, he had like nachos, pizza, <laughs> like had football playing, like it's fantasy football time. I actually seen it on Twitter and I'm like, I have no clue. Then it would just be guys coming in class like super mad going off about like their fantasy team and how certain players just didn't do what they're supposed to do. I'm like, bro, this is crazy. I don't know if I even want to get involved because <laughs> It seems dangerous, bro. Like, I mean, they used to come in mad, like hot. I'm like, man, I don't know if I should get. I don't know if I should get into it. But I actually <laughs> heard that it's been big, though. I heard it is big, so I need to. I need to hop on board. With that. Yeah, man, it's absolutely massive. I know uh, in our big time money league, we, you know, we all go to the same spot. We all got our laptops, you know, the, the drinks are going, the food is going, there's music. It's it's a party, you know. Uh, so definitely, I recommend get into it, man. Listen to the podcast. You know, you can check us out on the web also at timeskewed.com, man. We've got a bunch of different articles and we're, I, I promise you, man, if you stick with us, we'll, we'll get you good at fantasy football and uh, we'll, we'll make sure we, we get you some winnings coming your way. Uh, my last question for you, and let's say, you know, you're, you're, you're on the practice field, right? Tom Bay yeah. Brady throws a pass your way, and you intercept it. Are you going to talk any smack to Brady after that? Or I guess what, what's going to go through your head if, you, if you're able to pick Tom Brady off in practice? Um, I feel in my head I'll say to myself, like, man, I really just picked up Tom Brady. But uh, as far as just on the respect side and just looking up, looking up to him and the things that he's uh, accomplished uh, – I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, get beside myself and uh, start start jaw jacking at him because you know I still gotta, still gotta remain humble as a rookie. You know, I still have have some things that I need to accomplish. You know, and um, a lot of things to add to my resume. So uh, as of right now, my resume is empty, and I'm just working on uh, adding to that. So you know, hopefully, I'll be able to get the opportunity, and then um, if I intercept the one time, I'll 
Got to intercept them again. Just keep intercepting them, and then uh, later on, I have to work on intercepting other teams in real games to get them to get him the ball back. So. That's awesome, man. That's a fantastic answer. Man, we really highly appreciate your time. You know, we know you're a busy guy. Uh, you know, you got a lot of people coming to you. So, Javon, man, we really appreciate We really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, man. And, hey, we cannot look forward. We look forward to you, man, seeing you out there on Sundays uh, on the field with the Buccaneers, man. So thankful, so happy for you, man. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, thanks, Javon. We'll talk soon, man. Can't wait to watch you this fall.